Welcome back to another Bear and Egg Review. This time I've got a real treat. I feel like I've been waiting 28 years to say this. Uh, here goes. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you ED209. Uh, this is the 10-inch uh, ED209 unit from the movie RoboCop. This is by NECA Toys. It's designed to be uh, in scale with all the 7-inch seven 7-inch uh, uh, scale uh, NECA figures that are out there. Here's the here's the RoboCop right here. It just came out about a year or so ago. Um, if you want my uh, before we get into the review, if you want the fast verdict, you know I try to do my my verdict, buy or don't buy, uh, at the beginning of every video. That way you don't have to wait till the end. So <laughs> the fast verdict. All right, here here it is. Neca, where were you during my childhood? Where were you? This is this is it. This is what I I would have paid. Everything I had back in 1986, 87, when I was a kid and I had just seen this movie, I mean, I sat there saying to myself, where, where is this toy? Where is this toy? Why, why hasn't anyone made this? You know, there, were, there actually was a toy. Uh, I have to find a picture of it, and I'll, maybe I'll put it up uh, to show you guys. Uh, there was a toy, a crappy little thing, but uh, this is it. Okay, so articulation. This thing has got articulation out the wazoo. Uh, we'll start from the top to bottom. I'm going to do uh, two articulation segments here. Uh, what is articulated and then what isn't articulated for movie accuracy. Now don't get confused here. Uh, this is, when I get to the part about not what's not articulated, that's, these are not complaints. All right, I'm just, I'm just doing a comparison to screen accuracy because this thing is so, so screen accurate. So here we go. These flaps up here, these uh, raise and lower, depend, in, the, in the film, these raise and lower uh, depending on whether he's re getting ready to shoot his guns or not. You'll notice in the film, uh, when he's uh, taking aim, when his guns zero down on somebody, uh, these these will lower down or, or raise up uh, to accommodate. Um, uh, the uh, elbows here, I'm saying elbows, I don't know what to call these. These, uh, you've got this motion, and then you've got rotational this way. So you've got this hinged joint, and then this way, and then the gun itself rotates, and this is important. Uh, because this, generally in the film, these guns are only really seen at this angle, like this and like this. You see how these kind of create lines? Uh, so, but you can rotate it all the way around. Uh, the rockets are. This is this is just God. This is this is amazing articulation. Only NECA, man. Only NECA. Okay, I'm gonna push these back down and in. I have a feeling a lot of people are confused about these. I'm gonna go ahead and take a screwdriver, a little micro screwdriver. I want everybody to see how this works. Okay, so I've seen a lot of people kind of pop it out like this, like this. Okay, you see that? And it doesn't seem to want to budge anywhere else. NECA stuff is generally sticky. It's it's sticky. I don't know a better way to... And, and, it's, and NECA stuff, people know, it's easy to break NECA uh, toys too. A lot of people... I think when the first Gears of War and some of, some of the early Predators, the elbows would break. Uh, I'm holding a Robocop, but I'm talking about a different character line. The elbows would break, shoulders would pop. You know, It's easy to break some of the neck because of the plastic that's used or whatever. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so people are scared, but you gotta, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear this all up for you guys. To loosen this up, there's a little port here, see? There's, there's no room out here or out here, but this port right here, it's like, I don't know if you can see in the camera, this little, well, I'm gonna slide this up so you can see. See this port right here? Get a little, a little flathead screwdriver and uh, get in there. And basically, mine's already loosened up, so, so I'm just showing you how to loosen yours up. So get in there and push on it, push it up like that. You see, so it's just like the movie now. In the movie, there's the scene. I'll show it to you guys. Uh, there's this scene where uh, Robocop is running away from ED-209 and uh, the missiles, they pop out and then up. So when, now once this is loosened up, don't be thinking that you can just go willy-nilly on this. The way I raise it, once, it's lo once I loosen mine up, I give it support down here, support up here, and I move it as a whole unit. I pop it out a little bit and then I move it as a whole unit. I never grab the top and just pull it. I, I get under there with my fingers. See, I'm, I'm all the way. My fingers flush, flush with that little slot. So I'm supporting all the plastic all the way up as this extends to the top like that. And the same thing on the way down. Don't just push it down with your thumb like this. I'm doing it because I've got it all loosened. I'm not worried about it. But really, when you're pushing it back down, grab the whole unit, support this little plastic stem 
that's hanging, that it's uh, connected to, and move it down as a unit back in and, and seat it back in there. So that's another point of articulation. Okay, you've got a little bit of motion here. That's fine. That's why you never saw him in the movie spin his head all the way around. So this is totally acceptable. I, I'd call it screen accurate. Uh, now you got the legs rotate uh, uh, on, on this this joint right here, and then uh, here's another. Uh, uh, piece of articulation I don't think a lot of people have found. You really got to exert force to loosen this joint up, but right here, you see this? And this is in the movie. This is critical, critical articulation. There's articulation that's left out. These guys, NECA left out some of the articulation, but not critical stuff. This is critical. You need this if you want to do any photo shoots or reenact any scenes or do stop motion. I don't know what people do with these, but uh, this uh, allows the legs to straddle things and you know, uh, when it's ne negotiating stairs, or even when it's just pivoting. The Ed 209 never just pivots to find somebody. He never just turns his head. He, you know, like when Mr. Kinney, the famous scene, points his gun, he goes, he pops up like this. He pops up and then takes a step like this. So his legs kind of, like one leg goes up and, and he, he rotates. This is really hard. I should just do it stop motion. So anyway, so this is uh, critical, but you're going to have to, when you do this, you're going to have to support the whole structure, okay? The whole structure. Get get a good purchase on it with your hand and, and hold. You see how I'm bracing with my hands? Do you see this? Okay? Because you're going to break it. You don't want to break this thing. These are expensive. So get the whole thing and, and, and really support everything as you turn it. Support this piece, support this, and give it a good hard uh, turn. Okay, and then the next uh, articulation is uh, is this uh, elevation. It's like an elevator here that allows him to raise or lower his overall height uh, since he doesn't have bent, you know, a, a knee joint that bends to allow him to stand. This is sort of in place of the knee joint. This is really stiff as it should be. It should be stiff. You don't want that loosey goosey, and then every time he poses, it falls down. So don't. Before you complain about how stiff this is, think about, you know, it's kind of a good thing. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I believe that is it. Okay, so let's get to what's not articulated. Okay, so things in the movie that are articulated that are not articulated on this guy are uh, the, I'm going to call them ammunition boxes. That's probably inaccurate. I don't know what else to call these, these, these kind of boxes here. Uh, in the movie, they expand. So they expand, they kind of rotate. When he locks his guns, they pop out and they they go out like this. Uh, another thing that happens is uh, when he's aiming his guns or he's getting ready to threat or deliver threats to a, a suspect, these extend out. So these gun arms, uh, they would extend out or in. Uh, sort of almost like he's focusing. Uh, now that's okay because if you're doing any stop motion or phot photography, you still have this, where he can kind of zero down, this kind of this range of motion where he can zero down on somebody, so that's cool. Uh, another piece of missing articulation. Again, none of this is a big deal. I don't care. I'm just pointing it out because we're. This is so well done. This is this is screen accurate for me, you know. And so, so now that we're at that level, at that at that measuring stick, at the measuring stick of screen accurate, we're going to point out what's not screen accurate. That's all that this is. Uh, I. Don't think I need to say again, I am in love with this. So these fla would have flapped down. These are not articulated, so don't try to bend them or bust them. They look like they're articulated. There's hinges and everything. They are not. These flaps, uh, they're like caps that cap down when he lowers his total height. Let me see, like he would, when he goes at rest in the film, these legs, the extensions go all the way down. The elevators drop all the way down, and then this, slam this, this slams down and clasps here. And then this rotating cylinder here would spin around and lock, as would these cylinders here. These would spin around and kind of lock down as well. Uh, and finally, the only the other thing that's not articulated is the toes. Now again, uh, the toes. Uh, you know, I'll be honest. I, <laughs> I'm not complaining, but I was uh, hoping to uh, be able to play with the. There's a scene in the in RoboCop later in the movie where he gets where. Uh, Ed 209 gets the whole upper half of him blown off, and it's just a set of legs, and he's upside down. The legs are upside down, and the one toe is going tick 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 like that, you know. I, I thought I was going to get to play with that. I didn't get to play with that. It's not articulated, but that's okay. Um, uh, any kind of uh, 
step ladder. Let's see if I have something here. So as you can see, I've got him uh, t on Tony Stark's uh, laboratory platform here because there's a step right up here. So as uh, he's stepping down here and his toe, this leg is left behind on the upper step. You can see as the toes, as the leg is angled and the toes are angled, uh, though just the way they're sculpted, it looks like the toes are kind of clasping uh, around the front of the step here. I'll get my light. So uh, I don't think the toes uh, not being articulated are that big of a deal. So uh, I think they look great no matter how you pose it. So not a problem. All right, so so don't kill me here. This is a sloppy, rough uh, stop motion. I just I had to do it uh, just to uh, show you how well articulated this thing and how critical the uh, the the certain joints that they did articulate, uh, how critical they really are to animating this thing. Um, you really can get them into any any pose that you want. So here's a really interesting thing that came with this guy, uh, Neca actually included sound effects, like movie sound effects with this uh, with this figure. So, I mean, this is, uh, that, that's huge. So here they are, it's, it's directly from the movie. I'll play a couple. So it starts out with this, the power-up sequence. And then it's got the threats. He's threatening the, uh, the guy with the gun. And it's got a couple more. There's a further threat. And then finally the shooting. He shoots the guy. And it goes on and on and on. It's actually from the extended version of Robocop. I was originally actually I don't know if I should even talk over this. Well, yeah, Robocop was originally X-rated. You got an X rating on the first draft uh, because of that ex that long, long sequence where he's just shooting and shooting and shooting that office uh, worker. Uh, and then they shortened the shooting down, uh, giving it, uh, thus giving it an R rating. Um, most of the versions that you get on DVD or Blu-ray are an extended version anyway. So extended version is kind of not so special anymore. Even on uh, Netflix, I think... Uh, I think it was always the extended version, the uncut. They call it the uncut version. Um, I don't know. It was a big deal when I heard about it in the 80s, but now that it's everywhere, I don't even know if you can get a, a non-uncut version. Uh, anyway, so that was nice of them to do. Only NECA, man. Like I said, only freaking NECA. And the other thing about uh, that sound effect that we just heard, uh, the shooting one, if you listen closely, you can hear the screams of the women in the office, or maybe some of the men too. It sounded like female voices, but they didn't bother to clean up the audio from the original movie scene. Like, um, if you buy the Millennium Falcon from Hasbro, the big Millennium Falcon, there's a lot of movie scene quotes where you can see they've done a lot of scrubbing on the audio and removed background music from scenes. So you hear Han Solo and Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi all talking about things, and a lot of the, the background noise and, and background music that was originally in the scene has been scrubbed out. They did a great job of editing, but NECA actually left. They didn't scrub the, the machine gun sounds at all from that extended sequence. You can hear the women screaming in the background when you hit the button on this guy. And if it was Hasbro, I would fault them. It's, I don't know. I hate having a double standard, but I do. NECA is crazy, man. They're just crazy. They're like total cult horror fans, total cult sci-fi fans. You know that that was on purpose. You know they must have had a meeting. So should we, should we scrub out those screams of the women while, you know, uh, while this guy gets mowed down in gunfire? No. The answer was probably no in the boardroom. No, leave it. Uh, only NECA. And then you've got this bonus sound. It's the sound where Robocop, uh, uh, shows up in the parking lot of OCP headquarters and Ed 209 confronts him, tells him, You can hear him walking towards Robocop. Now, the only problem I have with these sound effects, I shouldn't even say I have a problem. Like, like I said, we're lucky we even got these sound effects. But uh, uh, these sound effects are a little tinny, a little tinny sounding. Um, I think it's because the speaker is right here in the mouth. Um, and so it's it's not much of a megaphone, you know. I think the mouth is kind of uh, um, 
choking the sound uh, and making it sound tinny. But if I do this, let me put the mouth right up on the sp on the speaker of the camera and see if it sounds a lot, if it's got a lot more uh, volume to it. sounds pretty good. I think it's really just a matter of them perfecting where the speaker placement. Um, I think it's excellent. I, like, I'm, like I said, I feel lucky that we even got it. So another thing to talk about here is uh, paint apps. Uh, they really went all out. They just, you know, balls to the wall, total f screen accurate uh, paint apps. Uh, they, uh, I guess the first thing would be the, the wash. All around here, all throughout, you can see there's this wash. Now, when you talk about wash, what we're talking about, for those who don't know, wash is where you take uh, black paint and thin it out, like really, really thin it thin it out, like with turpentine or some sort of a, a cutting agent, something to thin, a thinning agent, and then just kind of drip it in all the little wells and little depressions. So you see, it's been, it's been painted that metallic color on the, the surface of the of the the unit and then uh they've kind of allowed black black dark 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 thin paint to just kind of leach into the little cracks that's a wash and this has got such a great wash i mean geez man i mean look at look at this look at this get in there and look at that oh man um just Great job. Uh, another thing I really like, uh, as I'm turning this around, you notice there's like warning labels everywhere, uh, like painted ones, things that look like they might be stickers. They could have been decals. No, they didn't cheap out on us. They could have cheaped out if they wanted. These are not decals. These are these are painted on, uh, just just all out. Look on on here. I mean, gosh, man. I mean, look. You know, um, and and for anyone that thinks that these are uh, maybe some of this is just kind of fabricated or imagined. Uh, because maybe it didn't show on screen in the movie. This is totally accurate. If it was in the movie, here's another one here. They just keep creeping up on you. Look at that, right in there. Um, if it was in the movie, or if it was on the original model for the movie, then it's on. Then it's on this model. Gosh, look at them. <laughs> They're just everywhere. Look at this one. Look at that little like. Looks like some missing fingers. I guess it's like keep your hands clear. Warning. I don't know. But uh, just excellent, excellent work. Um, and here's something I really like, uh, and th this is another example of Necker going all out when they could have cheaped out on us. There, I don't know how, I think this is coming out on camera. I'm going to just kind of tilt this flat surface here. All the surfaces have this. It's this iridescent, uh, bluish gray metal paint on everything. Here, look at the, the arms. Like this iridescent kind of, uh, uh, shimmering... Uh, paint job. Now this is exactly what Ed 209 had, and Robocop too. Um, Robocop had it too, and NECA did a, uh, just a knockout job on on doing that for Robocop. I have both Robocops. This is a Robocop with a spring-loaded holster, and then I have the earlier one uh, that came out before this guy without, and they're both slightly different iridescent paint jobs, but both just function as screen accurate. Um, uh, so yeah, you, if you can see it here, they could easily easily gotten away with doing just gunmetal gray, you know, just gunmetal gray or gunmetal blue, and they didn't. Um, uh, another thing I really love, this I don't know if this would count as paint, just, just texture, uh, is this dome. Man, when I first saw this movie, uh, I guess it was 1986 or 87, I think it was 86, I saw it on home video, my parents wouldn't let me see it in the theater, it was R-rated and I wasn't of age, but this dome, I don't know, maybe there's something I can just run across you hear that zipper sound the dome feels the, the tactile sensation the dome feels this texture is sculpted it feels exactly as i imagined as a kid when i first saw this movie as i imagined it might feel if i were to run my hand over the, the real full-size uh item you know the full-size model in the movie uh this is just the cross-hatched little i'll just zoom in you know what? I'll just give you a still photo. It's just so well done. So so many things they could have cheaped out on, and they didn't. Now, this comes in a blind box. There are no windows at all in the packaging, and that's fine. Uh, in, instead, you get this great, uh, you've got some uh, original artwork that NECA has provided here, along with uh, pictures of the item. And here's some cool stuff. They reenacted uh, one of the scenes from the movie using NECA toys. This does appear to be 
the uh, NECA RoboCop right here and the uh, the NECA uh, Ed 209. So that's pretty cool. They actually went ahead and did the, the pieces of masonry and, and I think there's rebar. Maybe that, no, that's broken glass in the scene when he destroys the interior of OCP headquarters. Uh, really great looking box. You got Ed 209. I don't know who did the painting. It says Jason at the bottom here. I can look it up later. But it looks like you got Ed 209 just sort of tear assing uh, through the uh, parking lot of uh, the uh, headquarters. Uh, so yeah, this is a, actually special order only, online order, online order only. You can't get this at a realtor. Normally, if any of you are regular NECA collectors like myself, um, you will find that your your most common reliable uh, or regular uh, retailer is going to be Toys R Us. Toys R Us seems to be the only retailer who regularly carries NECA toys. Um, uh, in this case, this was a, a limited uh, run and only available online. I got mine through uh, Big Bad Toy Store, BBTS.com. So here we are at the end of the video. Uh, my verdict, uh, I already gave you my verdict at the beginning of the video. That, that was the quick version. The long version, uh, I'll just extrapolate on what I already said. This is a must have, must have. This is, uh, I rarely will say that about something. This is definitely a must have. Uh, they're, they're going for $70 right now if you add shipping and everything. Once it's all totaled up, it's about 70 bucks. I got mine at BBTS.com. That's Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, I, I get it before it runs out. That's all I got to say. Wherever you get it, I don't care where you buy it, but get it before they're gone. You don't want to be left behind on this one. If you're a NECA collector or if you're just a RoboCop fan, definitely, definitely get this. All right, well, let me just let me put it this way. I don't know if this is saying a lot or not. depends on how much credence you put into my... Uh, my opinion, my film, my film credentials, but I'm gonna say this: I, I, uh, I have RoboCop the movie in my top ten list of films, and this is coming from a guy who at least thinks he knows film. Uh, I, you know, I went to art school, went to film school, I've worked in the film industry. Uh, I, I think I know film. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just don't know anything, and that's possible too. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people that know more than me. Uh, but my top 10 list includes, you know, the artsy-fartsy films, the high art, sophisticated stuff. That said, it also includes RoboCop, right there in the top 10 list of my best favorite films. So I, I consider myself, because of that, I consider myself a RoboCop superfan. Uh, definitely a huge fan of RoboCop. And uh, uh, with all of that, I would still say that this, this one is so good. This NECA Ed 209 is so good. Even being a RoboCop super fan, I'd say that this is so good that you could stop here. You could stop. You could collect this Ed 209 and this RoboCop from NECA and stop there. Never move up to Hot Toys, uh, the 12-inch scale uh, stuff. You stop right here with NECA and still consider yourself a super fan, a RoboCop super fan. Uh, that's just coming from me. You know, I don't know how much, like I said, how much credence you want to put in that opinion, but these are that good. The, the next level up, uh, the Hot Toys stuff, is uh, really you're at the level of a uh, film, a studio scale model, a studio uh, uh, a studio model. I mean, uh, you could put it on film. It looks exactly like... Uh, the Hot Toys one looks exactly like what they use for the actual film. All the only articulation is there and everything. This, I'd say this is good enough, absolutely. Uh, well, thanks again for watching, and take care.